Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just <laughs> real loud. And I, can't... I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. I've never been to Australia. It's on my list. Someday I'll get there. But if there's one thing I know about Australia is over the last couple decades in particular, that place has churned out incredible photographers. One of my favorites is Marcus Bell. I've known Marcus for, I don't know, 15 years maybe, maybe more. Don't even remember. But he's a fantastic photographer. He He's won all the awards, like every award you can think of, he's won. He probably has four of each of them, at least, maybe 10 of each of them, I don't know. But Marcus is a super nice person. I don't know how else to describe it. He's, he's sweet. That's not a word that I would normally use, especially to describe another man, I guess. But he's a sweet person, genuine person. Um, and I got together with him and we talked about taking risks we talked about fear. We talked about educating clients and kind of like what's happened with him lately is that he's become reinvigorated, I guess, of all the things that could happen this year. That's actually the name of the episode is reinvigorated. And I think that you'll be really happy to hear what Marcus has to say in that you'll be able to relate to a lot of it and hopefully become reinvigorated yourself. Enjoy. What w what would be best for us to discuss today? Well, I think like um, I mean we can start with the usual if you want to like uh like about um, I guess some, what I find what people like about what I started doing was more the wedding scape you know the big landscape with the couple mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. um, so we can. It'd be anything I thought about it if we if we talked about that was you know trying to put it in context in today's terms um, because so what I guess I guess what I've been doing lately um, is like I've been just really uh, into a few things and really about just learning um, myself uh, on many levels I've been and I don't want to go into this too much because it's still like an, a bit of an unknown for me and oh. I'm still figuring it out. But mm -hmm. it more just myself as like, I think as an artist, it's the first time in a long time, um, you know, that feeling where you just like, I always just, I'm happy to talk about obviously this, but uh, I'm always just so busy normally um, with my clients. Um, I always put them first and then everything that I sort of shoot so, you know, like when we went into um, XXV at Maine, you know, like we've got, there's so much really great images that I think we all got to capture, but yeah. they're still sitting on a hard drive, you know what I mean? I, and I, I never oh. get to visit those images, right? So, um, so, but part of, there's, there's many reasons why I put it, always put it off is because, uh, like uh, there's this whole thought process. What are you doing it for? Like, what is it that you want to communicate? What is it that you want to, you know, talk about and, and then share. And then, and then how do you present that? Um, and so I think like, uh, that's one reason why I put it off. Um, and because it's, you know, and then I think always want to put the clients first, but then I think I make that a, as an excuse um, for myself. I don't allow myself to make that time. Um, then you're making me you're making me think of something here right off the bat. And here's what yeah. I'm thinking. Sure, you have a conversation with somebody, and they say regarding your business, you need to put your clients first, right? Yeah, yeah. And you have a conversation with somebody else and they say, oh, it's extremely important. You got to put yourself first. If you don't put yourself first, then you can't be there for anybody else. Yeah. Then you have a conversation with somebody else and they say, you need to put your wife first. You need to put your husband first. Or they say, you need to put your kids first. Yeah. We can't put everybody first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's only one first. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and so I'm hearing you say regarding business in particular, you got to put your clients first. Yeah. And so that has conflicted with you as an artist and not putting yourself first as an artist using the XXV photography trip to Maine. That was in 2009, if I remember correctly. Wow. So it's been 11 years. And I think it was in June or thereabouts. Yeah. So it's been almost exactly 11 years that we were there. And you yeah. said it, those images are still sitting on a hard drive because yeah. you've been spending the last decade putting your clients first yes yeah yeah exactly and and i think for me um and and this is where like like what i found is that like i realize and and not that it's been i think to a detriment exactly but like like i then i've I, it's like as an artist i've just sort of or as a photographer like i've just been playing it safe um mm somewhere along the lines like I just sort of people wanted to, me to do this um that's what I did I, I, I love it so it's not um a chore um but then what I find what I've been able to do for the last few months is really explore what I used to explore um and I'm sort of relearning a lot of it um, and a lot of it is really relevant today still um from what i used to do when i very first started um you know and so it was really it's been really cool like uh to re you know channel that um and now like so like i'm looking at different things from color theory to um you know lots of other little bits and pieces um are you, you sick know, of like, playing it safe what's that are you sick and tired of playing it safe Yes. Yeah. So, and I think what, this is what's exciting about what, like when I'm studying and learning all of this at the moment is that it's uh, like, I realize, you know, like, um, by playing it safe, like I've been damaging myself, um, as an artist because like, I just got always these ideas, um, and I'm not applying them, but what, is exciting is that I realized it was when I was playing that way that was what made me so different um, in the first place and you know made me notice so like I've got all these ideas up here and that it will just sort of um, it's reinvigorating me to and I, I just know it's gonna like you know got the signature sort of style already Mm -hmm. And I'll be able to just, you know, expand upon that and, and refine it and even be, you know, better. And I've just got all these new skills now that I've just been learning and I've never had the chance to, to learn them before. And it's super exciting. So is it a matter of, okay, so you playing it safe is taking a beautiful landscaped image featuring a bride and a groom, typically. That's yes. like, that's typical, right? Yes, playing it safe because you can rock that you can nail that image and it's yes. going to be breathtaking right and it's pro it's predominantly going to feature a beautiful scene yes and then there you kind of have one there in the background there's a beautiful scene yeah. right yeah. and then there's the there's the bride and groom right yeah for you that's playing it safe because you know if you have the right location if you have the right spot which you typically do you have mm. a lot of options that you're going to be able to get something amazing. Yes. Yeah. What does it look like for you, given all that, what does it look like for you to stick your neck out and take a risk? So, so now I, I think it would be to go beyond what I normally would do. Um, and what I think I would actually do is say, you know, take that image behind me, right, is like, I mean, I, I mean, I love it as is, but I also know that I could do another exposure, like a, like a, you know, after, and just after they've moved and maybe do a five minute exposure and, you know, and have those clouds streaking across, mm. you know, so it's sort of like a, you know, like what landscape photographers do these days with like ND filters, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then combine the two images into one. So um, I'm just getting something that's completely 
different, um, you know. And so, like, I'm deciding to, you know, okay, I want to be a lot more creative. How can I do that? Um, sometimes I'm going to have to ask the couple to move out of the way and say, you know, take a break for a sec. I just got to do the next frame, you right. know, um, and then just do the post. I, I think what I realized is that being so busy, um, you're also very conscious um, in the post production and to do those things. But then I think too, what I'm realizing is, well, my creativity and, you know, shouldn't be limited by time. I should be able to try to build that in somehow into my pricing and packages and educating the client and saying, look, there's going to be a few images that are going to take a little bit longer before I get them to you, but they're going to be really quite special. So um, I think, you know, and these are things that I've probably done in the past anyway, if I've ever thought there's going to be a hurdle, the best way to, you know, combat that is to, you know, just educate the client and really let them know and let them be informed. And so then they're never questioning you. They've already got a, like a really strong belief in you because they're gravitated to your style. Um, Initially, sure. Already. Yeah. So, so like, um, you know, sometimes I, I think we, we can put limitations on ourselves. Um, you know, they, you know, it's not the clients putting the limitations on um, generally, it's probably ourselves more. Um, so I just know that I'm going to be playing more about it. And I think too, because I've got all these, uh, all these clients that have had to postpone their weddings. Um, mm. And then as I'm going through these, um, you know, ideas for my own personal work, I'm actually thinking how I can apply them uh, to wedding photography um, as well. And already thinking about shots, um, you know, that we did. Like, I mean, I had a, had a couple just the other day and uh they um they said they had to um change their um their wedding because they were going to have like all these people flying from america and in november and that that's not going to happen um mm -hmm. you know like uh australia are going to not allow flights until maybe mid next year so you know so it's crazy but they're going to have an intimate wedding um, and they're able to change the ceremony location where it's a bit like, not on a cliff, uh, like it's like on a very mountain edge and normally you wouldn't be able to have the ceremony there, but it worked out. They could have it at this special lookout. And then I've been already thinking, okay, well, I know the spot roughly, but I, to be able to do it justice, I'll have to use a drone in this case. And I'm already starting to think about how can I use off camera flash with the drone and sync that up. So uh, I've got three months to plan that shoot, you know, um, but that's, but I also like, I also like the part that you mentioned in your, in your communications with the client in that, isn't it also important to, yeah, not only get the shot and have that as something to offer, but in educating them, having the discussion so that on their end, there's this level of anticipation, yeah. right? And so in their minds, it's almost like, yeah, we are, we're getting what we booked him for. We're going to get that. We know that, but he's also yeah. informed us, you know, and on your end, it's education, the, educating the client. And on their end, it, it comes across as, we're getting more than we even bargained for. We're he's he's going above and beyond for us and doing X, Y, or Z, whatever that looks like, right? Definitely, definitely. So that satisfies and, and the artistic itch on your end, but from a business standpoint, that can also satisfy the profit or the revenue, correct? Yeah, yeah. And and I think a, a lot of that communication has to happen at the very first outside yes. communication that's happening when they're actually choosing a photographer yes. um, because otherwise they're just looking at a price list and they're saying, well, why is your price this? But I could go down the road for here. Right. Um, and so being able to understand that, you know, and, and get that process across, um, you know, and so I mean, it's been really great to watch a few different photographers in different genres. And that was the funny thing is that like what I used to do all the time before getting into wedding photography, or even when I did, I used to study all, all genres of photography. Um, you know, even sports photography, like, you know, how they've got that beautiful panning technique um, and it's been refined over the last, you know, you know, 20 years since I first started doing it. And it's, it's amazing what they can do these days. Um, but if like, 
there's certain images that I've done and I've used that panning technique. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known it. Like, I mean, I don't know if, if you've ever photographed wedding photography, you're not going to really know how to do a panning technique, you know. Um, but I would just study that, um, learn right. that. Um, and that's just one tiny little thing of all, you know, an array of different options to photographers and technique. Um, and that's what's been really exciting seeing, um, you know, other photographers and learning new genres again. Um, you know, I've been studying like black and white architectural photography lately and oh my God, like, you know, it's just the tonality range. Like obviously, you know, a big printing fan I am, but, but just how beautifully these guys in post-production craft their images, but it's also that technique at the very start. So it's always, you know, flows through from the start to finish. Right. Um, and it's so different to wedding photography. But then I thought, imagine bringing all those elements into wedding photography. Oh, my right. God. And so now I've got all these, and that's just one, you know, little part of it. Um, you know, so that's just one idea that, you know, that I'm looking forward to bringing in. You know, it's exciting. Is, so for you, over the course of the next few months, do you see, do you see the next few months as you essentially getting ready for this wave of opportunity once the levy starts to break and then you have all these different weddings that you can now start integrating these different ideas into and and not that you're gonna see because you're not you're not like changing your style 180 degrees what i hear what i hear and correct me if i'm wrong is that you're starting to integrate little bits and pieces of other things to kind of stretch yourself and at the yeah. same time offer your clients more like they're going to get even more from you than you've yes. typically been able to offer before. Right. And you're not, yeah. and it's not like reinventing the wheel of your business and like being a completely totally separate new thing. It's just yeah. like little bits and pieces and added integrations. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no, totally. Um, I mean, and it's going to be um, multifaceted as well because like a, it, you know, this is all started, I guess, from concentrating on my personal work. Um, and I want to go through the archives, but everything that, that I've got, um, ideas and projects that I want to shoot. Um, so I want to actually incorporate all these skills into that. Um, now the offshoot to that is that now I'm also seeing, okay, this is how I can apply it to wedding photography. This is how I can apply it to my clients. This is how I can apply it. Um, you know, in that side of it. Um, one of the things that I've always done is that I've always looked for efficiencies as well. So, mm. um, I'm really getting bogged down, um, you know, with Photoshop techniques. Um, and a lot of the time I, I'll, I'll, you know, will go and I sort of, I moved over to Lightroom and do a lot of the stuff in raw. So I don't have to do the Photoshop side right. of things. But then I realized there's so much in Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom. Um, and it was easy to say, you know what, that's okay. Like we may lose out of that, but the benefits in time in using Lightroom you know, I'll pick up and you know what I mean? And right. so it's sort of like a, always a yin and yang. Um, and sometimes you have to cut a few corners, I think to just, you know, make it in business, um, as well. So, but what I'm realizing now is that, look, if I do it right in Photoshop, um, learn the craft, then understand how everything works. What I find then is um, once I work out one thing, I can work off three or four brand new offshoots that I've never thought yeah. about before, was never possible before, only because of the amount of, just sort of by even sheer playing. Um, then I find that I action that into actions. Um, yeah. Then I can do like, um, uh, like an 80% get you there. Um, sort of action. So if I want to, I can then create like sort of little batches or not, I mean, like I could batch a whole wedding right. with that sort of whole new technique, right. get it 80% there. Um, but it would look amazing. And then obviously if there was a, like a signature piece um, for the client, then I would go back individually work on those images. So, so you're doing 80% 80 80 of the work of, let's say a scene or uh, a collection of images from a certain time during the wedding or 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 piece of the shoot and you're you're applying a batch of actions that 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 maybe um throw a certain treatment on there or whatever and yeah. and that's getting you a large portion of the way there and and your clients are seeing those as yes. proofs right 
Yep. Yep. Then if they order something, you go back and tweak those ordered images, right? Exactly. And then put your time into those to get you the rest of the way there. Yeah, exactly. Do you exactly. ever pick do you ever pick any like do you ever pick favorites go through before they even see them and and think to yourself, this one, this is the one. Yes. And spend an extra half hour on that one so that you're kind of doing that work on spec, right? But it's yeah, also yeah. the image that you want them to gravitate towards because it's your favorite, right? Yes. You do that too? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and that's where you do, like, well, like I find, you know, and, and I think a lot of other wedding photographers do this as well, is that they'll pick five to ten images and then print them and then surprise them. Oh, and the even client. print them. As, you know, and as a gift. So you're just sort of not printing them too big, but it's just a beautiful size and then you're presenting them beautifully. What's and a beautiful size? Is an oh, eight by 10 a beautiful size? Yeah, eight by 10, um, you know, is perfect, you know, but what I love is just having it on a, a you know, a larger piece of paper. So that way mm. you can handheld. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Cause I love using the fine art papers. It's amazing once you like, uh, you know, hand person, hand over a print to a person yeah. um, that's a fine art print and you just watch them feel the paper. Yeah. You know? yeah. And they have then this yeah. connection to the image even more so than, than ever before. And, yeah. and I think that's what you want to do is like, um, you know, you have that and then imagine them with their family, you know, handing around these prints. So it's right. nice to have like a, a 300 GSM, you know, stock because it's a little bit more weighty and, right. um, and then they can easily hand it over and, and hand, hand right. it around. So, you so like it's a important deep mat on a black styrene in an image box and you give them 10 of them and they didn't even know they were getting them. Right. Yes. And you're not, you're not out a lot of time or money, but what the, what they get, it's like makes the whole thing real. Right. Yes. And they it have it. Really yeah. Yeah. And funny enough, you know, like one of the, the things that we've uh, started to do the last uh, uh, 12 months is go back to providing a proof of every image um, of the day on in a six by four inch image again. Um, I mean, because I think we started to all go digital, but it, cause I was seeing the reaction of these fine art prints, you know, and I thought, you know what, why aren't we doing that uh, again? You know, like um, we used to always do it. Um, and that's what I'm doing now is that. And so I, back to proofs. Yeah. Back to proofs. Back I mean, to four by six proofs. Yep. Back to, of, you know, of how many, if you shoot 2000 images at a wedding, how many are you going to give them as proofs? Well, I now shoot 1000. <laughs> so. Okay. So really, I mean, that's, that's a really, that's a really good point. You yeah. shoot, you don't shoot as much like you're refining that piece, right? The efficiency yeah, part. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And, so and you have you less have to call, you have less to edit, and then you yeah. have less to give as proofs, but yes. they're all, you know, top, top shelf, grade A stuff yeah 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 definitely like, i mean i've got to say like if, if it was probably a really big jewish wedding that we've been like photographing 18 hours right, right. Uh, and there's so much going on throughout the whole day uh yeah. I, I would say then yeah it would probably be around like up to 2000 um but you know for the most wedding it would be around 600 to okay. you know to 1200 images you know and they're getting those uh, as individual four by six proofs yeah yeah definitely yes are yeah. you finding that they are seeing that in and of itself as an added benefit that those proofs are something that they now get? I think so. Well, it's hard to, well, it's hard to gauge because, because they're getting married for the first time. Um, you know, right. They, right. But I feel like everybody always, Oh, my, my, my friend went here. My sister went there. My brother. Yeah, I, true. I, I, I'm, I'm asking because I'm feeling like, I feel like you're right in that. We used to do that all the time and it was just yes. like this, you know, 15, 20, 30 and beyond years ago. It was like, yeah. that's what happens. You get all your wedding proofs. Where are your wedding proofs? Yeah. And then it was like this big thing where like, we're proofless. You know, we don't do that. They come in, they sit down, they look, or we give them a gallery and they look and it's all this digital stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe something was lost there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. And so now you doing this retro type thing and giving them <laughs> proofs right for one like thing totally retros cool. retros in all the time anyway so it's <laughs> it's awesome i see you have a turntable back there you yeah. listen to you listen to albums that that in of itself is awesome we could talk about that later but the, to give them proofs is like this new thing almost relatively 
but it's an old thing. And yes. so, so for them to compare, like, I feel like to do that, you're going to have people say, like, this is pretty awesome. I get all these proofs now. Yes. Right. And I don't know any of my friends or anybody in my family for the longest time that has wedding proofs. And now I have this. So that's like yeah. this other extra bonus. I'm thinking yeah. out loud here, but I haven't talked to anybody that's been doing that for a long time. Well, I think too, like, I, like I, it's funny because I always get um, hit by Penny, my wife, you know, that yeah. um, she'll hit me up, like say, you know, like she'll give me a dig. She goes, you know what? I've got no pictures of my family you know oh, what I mean oh no like, and like um and and she goes like because like they just end up on my hard drive you know what I mean and that's where they stay they're like just sort of like they're just building up for me to do one day I know and, a lab that can help you out with that Marcus yes and then and then like um and then like you know there's no prints you know yeah. so um i, I just it. did uh, you know I, so i remembered like i think the boys must have been like seven or eight so for mother's day one time i just got like about a thousand prints done like i just put them like through and then just put them in a yeah. beautiful box yeah. um you know and not that she gets an apple off them but i just know that they're there um yeah and and i think we're all guilty of it, you know, like, and all our clients, I, I mean, I think I, I, I fortunate, like I, uh, we have good relationships with our couples and I always, um, you know, get to photograph their newborns and, you know, in their family portraits and, and things like that. And, and often they'll say, you know, oh, we haven't done anything with our photos. Um, you know, like we were going to do this, but we haven't done it. You know what I mean? And, and then we have couples that like, you know, it's like their 10 year wedding wedding anniversary and they say you know what we still haven't done anything with our photos so um so i think by doing the proofs is one step to you know that they can share it and i think it's nice is because then again it comes back to that touch um they can hand it out and you know and have it in a nice display box you know it just sits in their lounge room and, and they can uh, you know they share it when people come over or as well. I just so, went yeah, back been... to my kids earlier today and they had all the photo books out from their grandma. My my wife's mother makes photo books of all yeah. the trips that we go on or all the times yeah. they visit. And she yeah. sends us a new photo book every time. <laughs> yeah. And the kids had them all spread out on the table. Normally they're on the bookshelf, but yeah. I go back there and they spent, I don't know, a couple hours like reminiscing and going through all the photo books. And so I, mm -hmm. it's interesting that you say, you know, we don't get them out all the time, but we have them, right? And yep, they're not yep. sitting on a hard drive or a thumb drive in a drawer that you're maybe never going to see. And even if you do see that hard drive, you might think, oh, I think those were my wedding photos or something of that nature. But if you see a, a row of books on a shelf or a bunch yep. of photos in a box and a proof, you pick those up, you open it up and, you know, an hour and a half later, you're, you're full of nostalgia and memories and all kinds of wonderful feelings that you just can't acquire from a hard drive. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And that's actually probably another thing that we, like I started doing and, and uh, not that many clients have taken me up on this offer, but what I've done is that, um, so most of our packages are, you know, without an album, you know, these days, um, is you that know, right? sometimes, yeah, yeah. But what we do do is like, we sometimes negotiate if it's really important for them that we'll negotiate a price up front so that way it's included in for them. Um, mm -hmm. But then they've always got the option afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. And this is one of the probably, um, I mean, I'll talk about this, the reason for that in, in, a, in a sec, but, but one of the things that I like I uh, did offer in the, in the price list is saying that I would do a complimentary album design and provide it on PDF if they would want it, wanted that done. Um, so a one-off, um, and they can then get it printed whenever they like. So uh -huh. they get my design experience, um, is that I just know that obviously, you know, our customers are super bright people. So they know what the value, uh, or what it would cost to get a blurb book done or, yeah. you know, like something from white house or, you know, yeah. and, and so one of the things that like I realize is that the books I want to give are just beautifully fine art printed boutique yeah. albums, you know, and they're yeah. going to cost quite a, quite a considerably a, a lot more, but yeah. then that's going to include every image hand retouched again by myself right. and, 
and so much involved. And I can sort of go through that process with them. But the, the design aspect, because there's so many really great tools like Fundy and Smart Albums that you can design albums pretty mm-hmm. quickly. Um, so, um, you know, I offer that service where they get my design expertise and, and I can just send them a PDF and they can get it printed wherever they like. Um, but then it gives me that communication with them that, well, I could try to upgrade them to, a, a, you know, a, one of my albums at the same time as well. So you're giving them the actual files that they can use to print themselves. Yeah. Exactly, yes. And then they, yeah. they also understand that if they want, they can order from you and it's going to be that much better of a product. Yeah. That, is, that, is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this came about, this came about because, um, like we've been in business for, you know, like over 20 years now. Um, and so we've seen so many iterations of the photography industry and how it was where I think now, you know, there's been a lot of challenges the last five years because the mystery of photography has gone out the window because of, you know, everyone can pick up a phone, uh, take a photo, but also edit it and then also send those edits into like somewhere like blurred book or, you know, various places to Ooh, you know, ever, get yeah. stuff print, wherever. So, you know, we, before, when it, we originally started, people would just sort of get uh, a limited number of images in an album um, and maybe a proof book. Um, but, and then we would, uh, photographers would up sell, you know, or they would have the opportunity to upsell. Um, we were always conscious about the upselling. So what we, we would pre-sell. Um, right. and you would right. sell to different levels of albums, but then give them a, you know, a discount if they pre-purchase that. So what we found is that like our, um, sales were really quite good before the wedding day. Um, mm. so let's say like, you know, you know, like, uh, we found like that was like an average of 10 grand of, um, that either before or afterwards our clients were sure. going for and, and then we found that it ended up being a lot of work. Things were changing. Digital was obviously <laughs> now prevalent. Um, and we decided, you know what, let's give our clients all an album at this number of images. Um, and then we took our average sales for the year and then said, let's make that our package. So it just sure. made it really simple. Yeah. What it meant yeah. is that, um, and we then we didn't never did up sales. Like we just said, you know, it was taking um, so much time, but this was a better way. We right. still made the same amount of money, but it was more efficient and things like that. It worked really well yeah. for a long time. Um, and also too, we, we were really upfront with our clients. They were happy. They never felt upsold. Um, so it was, it was a really great system, but then, um, everyone wanted to go digitally. Um, so that's when things sort of, um, changed where they didn't really want an album that we went through this phase where no one wanted albums. Um, and I know that's changed the last few years, people coming back and, you know, wanting albums now too. And so, and so that's where, you know, we worked out, okay, having 40 or 50 images in a beautiful fine art album, you know, including that in, in the package worked right. fantastically and, and just keeping our average there. So, you know, and, and, uh, but that worked well now, but what we realize now with, with clients sometimes not wanting an album, and someone, some clients being pigeonholed into a 40 side album that we realized that we're probably doing them a disservice because um, we might have been um, limiting to them what the possibilities that they could oh, have. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's what we've come back to realize now is that we, we've changed things again. So we're listening more to our clients what they want, um, becoming more boutique, um, you know, designing, you know, individual albums, you know, talking about, but we're doing it in ways where, um, you know, we're giving them prices up front before we do too much designing and everything like that. Um, so and Wise. That works really well Wise, yeah. I mean, they, now they understand that part of it too. So mm-hmm. and they, we have to educate them a little bit about what's involved. So, and why the difference is um, rather than doing themselves. Um, and the, the fact is, is that if they, they say they're going to do it themselves, but often is that, you know, five years later, they still haven't, you know. And do um, you have that conversation with them just like that? Um, I mean, do you well, convey to them that, yeah, I, I get the, how, or maybe how can you convey to somebody 
without coming across like you're ca- you're talking down to them. You know, when everyone yeah. says, "Oh, I'm, I'll, you know, I can get to myself. I really enjoy doing this," or my my sister's a graphic designer and she'll really want to. And then how do you convey to them that, yeah, you know, kind of everybody says that. And then five years go by and we find that most of our clients, that's not the case. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I think for me, it's just sort of like, um, because I'm probably, you know, down to earth and I'm down to earth, you know, generally, uh, and, and just with my clients, I'll just say, and I think too, because we price our, we price ourselves where if they buy an album or not, it doesn't bother me because um, we're really the service that um, we, we're um, getting paid for. We're getting paid mm-hmm. well for mm-hmm. already. Yep. Um, so, so I, I would just say, look, you know, look, it, it's entirely up to you if, if you would want an album or not. Um, you know, you don't have to decide now. There's no pressure. I'm happy to talk to you about options at, you know, any time, sure. um, you know, and go through that. Um, you know, these are the benefits, you know, why, you know, if, and I'll show you some of the albums. Right. And immediately, oh, yeah. Yeah, and immediately they'll 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 fall in love with it, and and other people, um, you know, don't. You know what I mean? Right. And and I, I get that. Right. You know, right? Um, they just don't. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, and then and I get that, and that's where like I respect, and I think what I've learned, and my addiction to hi-fi, like you see in, in the back, right, mm-hmm. is um is that like I learn a lot through the, in my own buying experiences. Yes. Um, you know, like, say for instance, with hi-fi, you could go in and say, you know what, I'm going to spend, I've got a budget of $3,000, right. For speakers. Um, and then you go in and listen to a, a, a 3000 and they'll say, Hey, you know, look, um, uh, listen to these. Um, and they, these are eight thousand dollars, and you go, oh, really? These sound really good. And then, oh, you like these, right? And then you should listen to these ones then. And then, like, and these are like fifty thousand dollars. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And seriously, like, um, all of a sudden, yeah. you you walked in the door like wanting to spend three thousand, and you walked out the door either spending twenty grand already, or thinking that how am I going to find 20 grand because I've got to find 20 grand because I love these speakers. And, oh. you know, and it was because, yeah. Hey, you had a good salesperson. Yeah. But all of a sudden during that experience is that you fell in love with something and you now have a lot more value for it. Mm. And that's what you've got to give your clients is that yeah. give them a little taste and if then they fall in love with them, give them options and don't limit them. And I think that's what I've realized through my hi-fi is that why do I want to limit my clients? Because if they really love it, who am I say that this is not um, appropriate for them or this is too expensive for them? You know, like often, that. you know, people will say is that we'll limit our own, um, our client's ability to spend only because based on, you know, we think our prices are too expensive. Well, we think, right, right. You know but yeah. in fact, you know, it, it, they're warranted and, and, and they're, they're valued and, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, you know, and probably cheap for what they're getting, you know, and, and so, um, and getting, a we had a, f- we had a 50 inch print one time in our studio and we thought that was pretty big at the time. This was a while back yep. and the lady came out and, you know, you, you show her the, you know, the smaller and you go up and then you show her this is. And she saw the 50 and she just stood there and she said, yeah, but can't I get it bigger than this? Yeah. And it, it, it like smacked us upside <laughs> down. Like, well, how, we need a 70. We need an eight. We need bigger print. We need to show bigger stuff. Right. Like, yeah. cause yeah. we thought just because we thought 50 inches is big. Yeah. doesn't mean all of our clients are going to think 50 inches is big. And this lady was right. We find out she's got this huge room. She had room for an 80 inch print above yeah. her couch, but we weren't showing anything like that. Right. So I love the concept behind that. And I love being able to, or putting yourself in a position where you give your, you give your clients the opportunity to spend what they think is appropriate for what they think is best for them. Right. Yeah, and if yeah. you limit it with packages and all these other, you know, all the products and it's kind of like, well, this is kind of like what you get then you're you're not giving them that opportunity to maybe go way further than what you ever thought they would 
right? Exactly. And and a lot of, I mean, you learn all these things from different, um, you know, places and, you know, and a lot <laughs> yeah. of the things that like, um, that I learned or just sort of ch- or challenge myself was, you know, going to places like PPA and WPPI, mm-hmm. um, you know, in, in the US there. And, uh, and then, you know, there's a mutual friend that we have, right. And, and we would just always get chatting and they would say, oh yeah, we did this like, you know, $20,000 sale, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Album sale. Yeah. And I think oh. at the time, like our, uh, you know, mine was like 10 grand or something, you know what I mean? And, and then I thought, I, I won't say, like, I thought, geez, um, how can you make 20 grand? Like, and like, I never thought <laughs> right. it was possible, right? Right, and so right. The next year, I, like, I'll, I'll come back, oh man, like I made like a $22,000 sale because, yeah. because I, I thought I knew it was possible. Yes. You know what I mean? And someone else yes. has done it. So yes. I ended up doing it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, and the clients just loved it. And so, and then they honestly, when you said, um, you know, we did a $50,000 sale, ah. you know what I mean? Like albums. I said, how do you do that? And then like, I ended up doing a 50 grand sale. Do you did I mean? you really? Oh you man. Know, and I never, ever thought it was possible. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and right. honestly, like it was a very rare 50 grand sale. Like, I don't of know. course. Doesn't happen you know, every day, of course. No, no. But but you know, a lot of work went into it and um but the client, you know, it was just perfect for that client. You know what I mean? Right. Um you right. know, and it was a rare client. But right. like I think coming back, what was more important, it was having those conversations with people, uh other photographers that yep. gave me belief that I thought wasn't impossible. And I think yep. you know, one of the biggest things that stop us is fear. Um mm. You know, like I know one of the big things in my life is because of, um, you know, my dad was a photographer and, you know, and, and, you know, he, he passed away when I was young and, you know, inspired me in so many different ways. And for a long time, like, um, like I knew at the back of my mind, he, he went bankrupt as a photographer. And so I, for a long time, I realized like when I was starting to, you know, gain some momentum and we're doing some really good things. And, you know, it was like a struggle for me because mm. like here in the back of my mind is that my dad sort of, you know, wasn't able to make it. How am I going to do it? You know what I mean? Oh, man. Um, yeah. How could I surpass him? You know what I mean? So we have these blockers yeah. sometimes, you know, yeah. Um, and so I had to overcome that. Um, you know what I mean? And like, it's only now that I've got kids um, you know, and, you know, Jackson's like 16 now and yeah. the twins are 14 and, you know, mm-hmm. and like, it's taken me this long to understand, um, so many aspects of what my dad, um, you know, and what, as a parent, you want your kids to do and you never want to limit to them. You just want them, you know, you want to just be the groundwork for them to go and bounce and fly into the future. And, and so when I started realizing that I was able to overcome how my dad, he, he would never have saw that as a hurdle. He would be just proud, you know, right. You know, and so right. where I was keeping it as, so, but how, how often do we as artists or as photographers or business people limit ourselves because of fear or things or blockers and things like that? But you gotta, well, we have that own fear ourselves. And if we were to think about it for a second, and maybe stand back from it, there's no way you would want your children to suffer from the fear like that. Right. Exactly. So totally. we have that fear and you think, well, I wouldn't want my children to suffer from any sort of fear that had anything to do with me. And yet sometimes we're doing the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I get it. I get it. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. I didn't realize all of that. Um, d- tell me this, Marcus, where, where can people find you and all your stuff and everything you do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, my work is um, on our website, which is under studio impressions.com.au. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also on Instagram, uh, my personal one is at Marcus Bell. And the studio one is at Studio Impressions. Mm -hmm. And so you generally get to see, you know, different works on on, on both. Uh, At the moment, like I've been a lot more quieter on my personal one because I've been just sort of so, you know, delved into, uh, um, but I've been still plugging away at the studio one. Good. Because it's important to uh, to appear that you are alive right. Right. out there in the big world at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, these days especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, uh, man. 
Hey, well, yeah, you know, I I don't know when we're going to see each other next. I mean, normally I would say it's only going to be a few months from now, but who knows? I um, I yeah. I will say this: I I really appreciate you taking the time on on early in the morning for you and and jumping into the evening for me right now. Also, you're the next day. We're we're yes. we're on we're on different days right now, which I always yeah. find just fascinating. You're in tomorrow right now for me. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you your lotto numbers. <laughs> I wish you could. I wish you could. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. That would be so trippy. Oh, if only. Well, uh, in any case, thank you, brother. And I look forward to seeing you the next time, wherever and whenever that is. Have a good one and say hello to your wife for me, please. And you, and likewise, mate. And your kids, too. I will. I will. I will. Thank you. No worries, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there it's there somewhere <laughs>